Now it's time to get to the melodic aspect of music, pitch. This is my personal favorite, it's what comes easiest for me, and it's something that children tend to really absorb well. Now music, the idea of pitch, is a very theoretic, abstract idea, especially for little children who don't know how to read yet, who aren't really used to having a symbol for sound relationship, much less a symbol for meaning relationship. So one of the ways that an extremely brilliant teacher of children named Kadai, he's Hungarian, um, came up with was in the Solfege system of pitch names and as well as hand signs. Now, using your hand to denote different kinds of pitches is ancient. It goes back to the Middle Ages with uh, Guido D'Arezzo, who would he used the beginning syllables of his prayer, ut, re, mi, fa, so, and so on, to teach beginning monks the different pitches in the in what is now the Western scale. Thanks to the sound of music, many of us are familiar with solfege here in America. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, and do again are all the names given to specific intervals within each scale. Now, if you're not a musician, if you're not if you're not used to playing the piano, you wouldn't really necessarily know what I'm talking about. But let's assume that you have some grounding in music and that you're used to the idea of eight different pitches making up a scale. Fist right at your belly button. You've got Do. A little above that is Re. Chest level, we got me, then we got fa, like you're giving it a thumbs down. Right above at your mouth level is so, right above that is la, pointing upwards is t, which leads right on up to high do. So we've got do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. The way that I would introduce the concept of solfege is in telling children that it's time to take out our voices. Put your hand in front of your mouth and you say, so, 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 and you have them echo you. Can you take out your voice too? So, 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 ooh, I see my voice. I think it's purple today. What color is yours? Let's try it again and, you, and then you tell me what color yours is. So, so, so go around the room and everyone looks in their hand and comes up with the color they think their voice is. After everyone's had their turn, you say something like, wow, those colors are going to sound great together. I can tell. Let's try taking our voices out and then this time we're going to push it down. So, so, so. Can you do that? So, me, me. Can you do that? So, me, me. That's it. There you taught the first two solfege syllables, so and me. I don't know if you noticed, but so, so, me is a very common interval in a lot of childhood songs. A great game that you can play with only two pitches, so and me, is the tell me your name game. It goes like this. Tell me your name. Notice I keep doing the pitches for so and me. Tell me your name. My name's Miss Rama. The way we usually played this game, you could do it any any number of ways, but we usually played it sitting in a circle, and we had each child sing to their neighbor. So you turn to your neighbor and you ask them, Tell me your name. The other child sings back, Caitlin. The other child sings back, Pleased to meet you. Then that next child, Caitlin, would turn and sing, Tell me your name, to her neighbor, and the neighbor would sing back, Bryson, and so on. Another way you can do this, especially if you notice kids having trouble actually matching the pitch, is where you sing to each child in turn. So I might start off saying, Tell me your name, and then we get to Tyler, and he goes, Tyler. I would ask him again, Tell me your name, and then he would echo or answer, Tyler, and I would say, great, you matched my pitch, great job. Okay, kids, today after we tell each other our names, I'm going to ask you your favorite food. So I want you to be thinking of what your favorite food is. 
so that when it's your turn to answer me, you can sing right back your favorite food. That little intro is crucial, otherwise you spend days between children and they forget the whole game. So let's say that you've gone the round circle, you've said your name, everyone's sung their name. Now you can ask, what's your favorite food? Cupcakes, sounds yummy. Go to the next child. What's your favorite food? Macaroni and cheese. Sounds yummy. Tell me something else. Cupcakes. Sounds yummy. Tell me something else. Apples. Sounds yummy. Great job! You matched my pitch! So if you have a child who keeps struggling to match pitch, they'll usually be going flat, going lower and lower. You just keep right on it matching their pitch. They'll eventually get to a point where they can't go any lower and they'll have to match your pitch and they will be so excited. We're going to add one more to have the, the first three that every child should know. Today, boys and girls, we're not just going to push our voices down. We're going to try pulling it up. All right, echo me. So, 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 la, so. Can you do that? Can you pull your voice up? So, la, so, so, me, me. Can you do that? All right, let's do it all together. Ready? So, 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 la, so, so, me, me. You may have noticed, but so, so, la, so, me. Those are in all sorts of childhood songs, especially the unforgettable Na 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 boo boo. So so me la so me. So so me la so me. <laughs> Don't you feel like a nerd knowing that?